Hello. In this video, I'm going to be talking about paper braille and electronic braille. This is paper braille. It was actually produced on a Mount Batten braille writer. It could easily have been produced on a Perkins or any other braille embosser. And uh, as you can see, it's fairly easy to generate uh, from these kind of printers, but there are limitations to paper braille. The first limitation is just the sheer volume of paper that you need to produce for any book or a document. Uh, typically the rule of thumb is you need about three times as much paper per electronic page. So this makes it quite an awkward medium to cart around from school to school, home to school, and in lectures and so on. And also, of course, once it's done, it's done. If we want to look for a particular sentence or phrase in a braille book, we have to manually turn the pages and scan each line until we find the, the thing we're looking for. Whereas with electronic braille, which I'll show you in a minute, we can actually use computer techniques like Control F to actually quickly find key phrases and so on. All right, so I'm just going to switch over to uh, the show you to show you a electronic braille device. And I'm just going to switch the camera down now to look down at just an example of an electronic braille device. And here we have the Focus 40 braille display. Now the Focus 40 electronic braille display is just one of many electronic braille displays available on the market. This one has 40 cells of braille. It has some uh, input keys for braille input. These are typically called Perkins keys, but we might as call them Mountbatten keys as well. The essential point is there's six keys across here, plus a backspace and an enter key across here. And as I turn the device, you'll see that some of these plastic pins are raised at the moment here. So this is showing up to 40 characters of a braille line. You'll also notice there's some extra navigation keys here and on this surface here. Now every electronic braille display is different in detail, but essentially they attempt to do the same thing. Connect to a computer or to a tablet or to some other electronic device and display in braille, refreshable braille, the thing that we're looking at. Okay, so um, I'm actually got this Focus 40 connected to a computer at the moment it, and um, the computer is running JAWS. It could be running NVDA or some other screen reader. But what I'm going to do is show you how the Braille will change as I use the computer. So I'm not showing you the computer screen at the moment, um, but uh, what I'll do is I'm just going to go to the Microsoft Word program and show you how the Braille will change as I click on a line. Now I don't know if you saw how the Braille changed there, I'm just going to go into another line and you'll see that the pins are moving instantaneously as um, I move from line to line. Now I, can, I was doing that with the computer keyboard um, which is just off screen, but equally I could use these keys on the uh, on the Braille display to do much the same as an up or down arrow on the uh, on the computer keyboard. So typically, uh, though the electronic Braille display could be used without having to use a computer keyboard and obviously not having to use a mouse, generally speaking, a blind person will use the computer keyboard in combination with the braille display depending on what's most productive. So we can feel the braille, we can actually bring the cursor to a particular point, let's say this word here, and then the, there's a little blinking blue cursor here, so a little blinking cursor just under here, which is indicate where on the Word document we are. So I'm in a Word document at the moment. And I could actually make a correction either by inputting in Braille at the top here or by using my computer keyboard.